Hey guys, um, decided to kind of create a video today, you know, over the past couple of, uh, you know, weeks and months, you know, a lot of you have come up to me with questions about, uh, you know, how to read certain, um, you know, wording within the program, you know, whether, you know, we're using like a specific, um, you know, a specific measuring tool for intensity, you know, or, you know, how heavy that you're working. Um, I decided to kind of create like an instructional guide to help kind of clear up a lot of the questions and kind of have like a, like a universal, um, like tool and rubric for, <clears throat> you know, how you would kind of gauge you know, what your program is, uh, you know, instructed. So on the, the main screen I have written, why use auto regulation? Um, you know, this is something that a lot of other coaches will, you know, you know, kind of put their two cents in about. Um, I find that, you know, under the eyes of a, a coach, you know, auto regulation is, is in most cases done by the coach because he or she is regulating how heavy an athlete goes and capitalizing on when they look good and when they don't. You know, I want to make sure that we have the ability to kind of self-assess our own progress as well as utilizing all the tools that I give you guys, you know, as far as like zoom coaching and feedback, the, um, the first of three topics that we're going to talk about today is RPE. Um, it stands for rate of perceived exertion. It is on a one to 10 scale, you know, one being the least intense, 10 being the most intense, you know, 10 is often created as, you know, a, like a maximal effort without any, um, without any additional, increases capable so we're, we're talking about a one rep max unless you're dealing with bodybuilding and bodybuilding in very specific circles you won't ever really see anything under a seven uh, a lot of bodybuilders will dabble with some fives and sixes just because of the reps that they would use but we're talking about strength and conditioning we're talking about weightlifting or powerlifting um you'll never usually see anything under seven. A lot of people have a hard time with RPE because they need a measurable uh, data to associate with the numbers given. And usually RPE is something that is later adopted in your um, athletic career, you know, whether you're new to the barbell, maybe by year three or five, you implement RP a little bit more frequently because you just have more of a connection to the lifts. Like, you know, you know how much you can squat for a set of five, for a set of three, for a single, like there's just more uh, associated understanding and data that you can kind of collect for. But one of the things that I've kind of experimented with um, is with very new members, you know, members that are just starting out introduce like a, a pain scale like a one through ten scale that you would see at like a doctor's office you know just to kind of <clears throat> understand where you're at as far as like um discomfort and i would use that pain scale um throughout their development you know whether they're just doing body weight movements they're just doing dumbbell movements. They're just learning how to move the barbell for the first time. You know, on a scale of one to 10, how did that feel? Just so they can plant the seed and understand that, you know, their relative effort is important because of the fact that they are only able to perceive what they can execute. And that becomes like a measurable, you know, data point that I need. Um, you know, so transitioning from RPE, one of the more easier to understand uh, markers would be RIR or reps in reserve. And a lot of times RPE and RIR become conjoined and they're almost like just like synergistic creation where 
you know, the reps that you have in reserve correlate to the RP that you felt. And what that means is, as I will kind of explain, um, it's, it's still on the one through 10 scale. Um, and instead of a seven through 10 being like the, the most difficult effort that you can produce for a certain movement or exercise, um, it's usually graded from the reps left that you have before failure. So it's like a one to three as opposed to a seven to 10, you know, so we can kind of think of it in terms of, Hey, you're doing three sets of 10, you know, strict press and you have no idea how heavy you should do it. Um, but I'm telling you to work up to a weight where you feel like maybe you can do 12, maybe you can do 13, but you definitely can't do 14 and you definitely can do more than nine. So we have to kind of like find that range of ability to make sure that we are within the right intensity. The correlating reps and reserve RP is going to match very closely to the appropriate percentage that is needed for the exercise or the rep range that's kind of instructed. The last one that I have is a uh, ZOI. Uh, zones of intensity and that's something that I didn't necessarily create but I had adopted from you know a Soviet uh, textbook where they had talked about 10 zones of intensity that they would use for the Olympic lifts and essentially every um, every percent from zero percent to 100 percent was marked off in 10 different zones to correlate uh, the intensity done for an exercise, whether it's a snatch or a clean and jerk, a muscle snatch, they were all given like these correlative zones to those movements. You know, if a year or two ago, I had, you know, read through the books a few times and kind of scaled back the idea of kind of creating, um, in sense an RPE for weightlifting, but having it backed by an actual relationship to the movement. You know, for instance, like a zone one would be, you know, 60 to 70% of a specific movement. Zone two would be 70 to 80%. Zone three would be 75 to 85%. And it would just kind of like titrate up to like a, a max effort, 100% of a lift it was simple enough for people to kind of understand because it gave them, you know, a 10% window to operate in. If they felt off that day, they can work on the low end. If they felt good that day, they can work on the high end. It, it limited the auto regulation while still keeping them within a desired intensity range that produced a specific stimulus or outcome. And, um, you know, to this day, I still use it. Um, especially since it's become like the known vocab and everyone kind of can have like an emotional relationship with the zone, understanding that, hey, this movement is zone five. Today I can understand that like it's a very heavy day. I'm potentially going for like a max effort lift. It's culture that's assimilated with that actual, you know, metric. One of the bigger takeaways that I want people to understand is when you see these kind of uh, verbiage in your program, you have to be you know, honest with yourself, with your effort, and you have to be okay with like experimentation because oftentimes there isn't like an actual correct answer off the bat. You know, you have to, you have to touch like a hot stove to know what hot feels like. We have to be you know, representatives of our own ability you know, in these times and understand that I can still get the same outcome if I change the paradigm of what I'm trying to achieve day to day, you know, instead of me trying to do like five triples in the back squat at like 80%, I'm going to find five triples in the back squat where I feel like I have three reps in reserve and I could be very far off from where I should be or even surpassed where I should be, you know, based off of like what the life stressors um, inhibit 
you know, with my ability to kind of produce force or, you know, execute those kind of movements. For those who are struggling with equipment and don't have access to a barbell or a squat rack and they're doing the dumbbell variations, um, you know, free weights, banded movements, body weight movements, RIR becomes your kind of like go-to because one of the things that uh, we have to kind of um, adjust and manipulate is our perceived effort. And that's going to create the stress that we're trying to achieve, even if we don't have all the equipment that we want. Uh, for an example, you know, say you're doing a, uh, a Lehigh Valley barbell at home strength dumbbell like program. And the program calls for three sets of 10, like goblet squat, and you don't have enough weight to make 30 reps, like stimulative and difficult. What you have to do then is manipulate um, the reps in reserve that you're trying to get. You know, so if, if I prescribe three sets of 10, I'm looking for something to feel like you have three reps left to give me per set. But if you only have like a, like a 10 pound dumbbell, you might have to do 20 reps to get that same kind of feedback, you know, from the muscle contraction. Everyone has dumbbells, pull up bar bands, whatever. But if you, if you lack in something, you can still get the same stress and the same stimulus and the same adaptation, whether it be, you know, strength or, you know, power or hypertrophy, like muscle mass. We need to learn how to cater towards those outcomes by adjusting, you know, the prescription. You have to understand that, you know, your, your relationship with the effort that you give is going to determine the outcome that you're trying to receive. In trying to kind of PR and progress and build muscle and change, you know, body composition, your body has a very difficult time like differentiating like a perceived stress versus like, you know, a known stress. You know, if something feels like 70% to you or 80% to you, it will create as close to or an, or an identical adaptation versus something that like feels too light or feels too heavy and you just weren't supposed to be within that range at that point. Um, I hope this kind of answers, you know, certain questions. I'm sure it probably like raises some others, but you know, hopefully I can kind of create more of these informational videos that are more pertinent to people's situations at home. Um, just because I want to make sure that people have all the necessary tools to take what limited equipment that they do have and the programs that were given to them and maximize it to their, you know, their best ability because we do have the ability to manipulate those variables that way instead of just kind of feel like we're stuck, we're going to regress, we're not going to get strong. You know, we don't have the right tools to kind of get to where you need to be. Um, you know, I hope this was, um, you know, clear in, in, in that and then we'll go from there. I appreciate it. Thank you.